If you've ever tried to grow a garden, you've probably had some unwanted animal visitors chomping on your produce. In this video, I'm gonna break down all the ways that I have helped animal-proof my garden, things that I know that work, and I'll mention a few things that I've tried before that have not worked. And I'm gonna be talking about the animals that I'm keeping out of my property here in Kentucky. You know, I've never had to keep out a moose because we don't have moose and I don't even know where to begin. I don't live out west, so I've never had to keep out um, gophers. So if you have experience with those things or if you have anything else to add to the conversation, please leave it in a comment down below to help others out. So let's get into the video with the first animal being the rabbit. For rabbits, and I'm talking about eastern cottontail rabbits, you're going to want a fence that is two to three feet tall. Now this right here is a two foot tall uh, chicken wire with a one inch opening. You don't want anything wider than one inch because those small bunnies can squeeze right on through. And if you can, ideally have it buried a little bit. Six inches should be enough. They don't readily dig uh, when you know, trying to access food, more so when burrowing, but that will help protect it. You can use things like blood mill or garlic sprays to try to deter them and they'll work a little bit but in Kentucky it rains pretty regularly and you'll have to reapply every single time. So this was one of the first things that I put up in my garden to help keep rabbits out and I've never had a rabbit in here. Now if you live somewhere else with a different type of rabbit that maybe can jump a little bit higher maybe you need a taller fence but growing up we always had a simple two-foot fence and it worked. Next on my list are groundhogs or woodchucks. And I don't know how much wood a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, but I will tell you that they will absolutely mow down your garden. To keep groundhogs out of your garden, you need a fence that is at least three foot tall. Groundhogs can climb, uh, did you know that? They're not the best. And ideally, have it be a little wobbly. This fence isn't super taut, so that helps or keep them out because they don't, they don't like that instability in climbing up that high. And my gate all around has pretty minimal gaps to ensure that nothing can squeeze through there. And down below, I have a board that's installed as a threshold that helps prevent digging as well to make sure that nothing is gonna get into my garden. So this fence is actually a four foot fence, but it is buried down a foot or comes out at an angle at a foot. Let me show you that. See, down here, you can see the fence is exposed. I need to bury this again. We've had some rain that has caused some washout. But the fence is, goes down three feet and then kicks out a foot. And this prevents any digging because as they come up to the fence and they try to dig down, by having that fence kicked out, they're gonna hit this fence and not be able to get through. So this is going to be a great way to keep out a groundhog. Additionally, I have a dog. I have a dog that patrols this whole area and you know, urinates, defecates in providing that signal, which does help a little bit, I think. I have read things that you can also take your own human hair and put that out. I've done it several times. I don't really know if it's helping at all. Um, you can also use human urine, uh, but this works. Having a, a nice uh, fence around that is three feet tall and that comes out a foot will be enough, at least has been for me, to keep out a groundhog. Now, I know a lot of people have problems with deer, and uh, this is a problem that I have myself. Our very first year, never saw a deer. And then all of a sudden, they started coming in, which should be you know, expected. We have a large wooded area. Um, there are a lot of deer. There's a massive problem across the United States of overpopulation of deer and high density numbers. So they're always looking for forage, and a garden is a lovely buffet that you've put out for them. And deer can be difficult to keep out of your garden because a deer can really jump. If you wanna install a, a deer fence, you're gonna need a fence that is eight foot tall. Yes, they can clear anything uh, under eight feet. Ideally, uh, if you can go higher, 10 feet, that'll work out even better. But I've done something, did something last year that really helped. And I noticed that my deer pressure that was happening inside this garden absolutely disappeared when I did it. And I put in these T-posts, so this is an eight foot T-post, uh, sunk down, I'm 6'3", so maybe that's like a foot and a half in the ground. And then I have fishing line tied on here. Now you probably can't see this on camera, which is really nice, because then I can look out at my garden and I don't see this big giant fence blocking out my garden. But this fishing line right here, 
the idea is that when they come up to you know try to you know see where they're going to jump because deer need to know where they're going to land or they won't jump uh, they bump up against these little rows of fishing line they kind of like weirds them out they, they're like what, what is that and then they bolt i know it seems like it shouldn't work but it has worked for me and has worked for others online as well so this is definitely something that you can try to do but then i have this larger plot right here let me rotate you around Whoop. Oh, we're all squirrely that does not have a fence I've thought about putting an electric fence all the way around this area um, to help keep deer, squirrels, and other things. We're going to talk about squirrels in a second. Uh, but that seemed too costly, not something I wanted to do. I found a better solution than a whole electric fence around my garden. And that would be this little guy called the wireless deer fence. So this right here, you can see the, the whole thing. It has batteries on the inside right here and then has these little prongs on the end that, and then you can see the little blue thing in the center that's a little scent module and the idea is that this smell the how this little blue thing smells uh, is very very attractive to deer so the deer come in they're attracted to this more than anything else in the garden they touch their nose to it and boom they get electrocuted they get electrocuted and they run so it's the same idea of a full electric fence except it's drawing them in to this very tiny location and if you do have an electric fence you can do the same thing people sometimes bait them with uh, tin foil and peanut butter to draw the deer into that specific spot to make sure that they do you know hit the fence and get electrocuted and run away and i have shocked myself with this uh, it is unpleasant um, but it's not like super super painful just enough to deter you I had sweet potatoes growing actually right here that were getting mowed down, absolutely mowed down by deer last year. You know, they would come up and come up, mowed down, put these in there, they started growing. So I don't have anything on video, I wish I did, but I've seen accounts of other people on video, you know, where they, they, they tried these out, the deer hit it, they run away. My sweet potatoes started growing after I installed these, so these definitely work. They're maybe a little costly. I think it was 60 something dollars for three of them. So uh, over $20 a piece, you know, shipping. But uh, this company was made by a veterinarian. Really cool, not sponsored by them. I bought these, you know, with my own money. But wirelessdeerfence.com. Uh, these could be a great thing if you have an area that you can't fence in. Maybe you have some perennials or flower gardens in the front of your house uh, where you don't want a big giant fence blocking it. You know, sticking these in there, they kind of blend in pretty well, you know, because they're green this could be a great solution to keeping out deer. One thing that I tried that didn't work would be these motion activated lights, which I do like in general as lights, uh, but they did nothing to actually scare and deter away animals. All they do is light up when an animal walks past, letting me know from the inside uh, that there's someone out about in my garden. Luckily, the fences are working. Oh, and I also tried hanging up these Buddhist prayer flags, thinking that the fluttering in the wind would somehow deter deer they laughed at them, or maybe they enjoyed them. I don't know, but it definitely did not deter them. And then if you have little trees, you're definitely gonna wanna protect those from deer and everything else, uh, because in the winter time when food is scarce, they're gonna be looking for something to eat and your nice soft little wood of your little trees is gonna be delicious. So I have these in a wire cage that then is wrapped with a shade cloth. You can see the tree poking out up top. Um, this one right here, uh, has wire at the bottom that is only an inch wide, so to keep the rabbits out, but taller up above. Uh, and it's way cheaper um, to buy a roll of this and make cages yourself than to buy anything that's labeled as a tree tube or a tree cage. So if you've got several of them that you need to make, uh, go to your local hardware store and get a roll of appropriate wire. And now squirrels and their close relative, the chipmunk. I don't have a good solution here. I really don't. Um, squirrels really were hitting my tomatoes hard last year and one thing I did do was put some netting over the, the tomatoes. Now for netting, you can find netting that is like a bird netting, but a lot of that netting with that plastic weave is actually bad for birds. They can get caught in there. Other animals can get caught in there. Um, snakes um, easily get caught in there and I love snakes. Snakes are great. They're actually keeping down a lot of the unwanted animals in my garden area, so I welcome snakes in my yard. So if you're gonna be putting a net, use something like an insect netting, Whoop. like this over here. 
that will keep the, the squirrel out, um, you know, batten it down so they can't easily get under it. Usually they won't uh, do that too much, um, but that'll keep the squirrels out. So insect netting over something that is typically for bird netting. Now you can use a spray, just like I said with rabbits, but you'll have to regularly reapply that. And an electric fence probably won't work. Maybe they'll get shocked once or twice, but they're really clever and they're gonna be able to hop over it. And then speaking of clever, let's go on to the next critter that you may have problems with. A raccoon. Good luck. Uh, uh, the only thing that I could think of to actually keep out a raccoon who wants to get into something would be a full cage. A full-on cage with a, a locked door that they can't undo. I'm not talking like a simple little like mechanism that you slide over. They'll open it. Raccoons are super intelligent. I think the, the smartest raccoon is probably smarter than the dumbest person. Uh, they're, they're brilliant. Um, we have a giant raccoon um, that visits our compost bin. And for the most part, I've never seen any real damage um, that I could identify that was from a raccoon. I think I have enough forage and other things going on in my garden and the surrounding areas where the raccoons aren't hitting my garden. Now, if you're in a small urban plot and your garden is like the only real good source of food uh, for the animals around, you know, that's why they're, they're coming there um, because we've denuded our surroundings and our ecosystem of food for these animals. So they're, they're coming to you because you've created a, a great place um, to sustain life. That's why you're growing it. So you're gonna have those issues. Luckily, I don't have any problems with a raccoon but if I did, you'd have to build a, a structure over the, the whole thing. I don't have anything else for that. You, you could do an electric fence. Um, you know, they are a little less nimble than a squirrel, so they will hit that electric fence and be stopped. Um, I've thought about that particularly for sweet corn, but I haven't had that problem just yet. So raccoons are a difficult one. If you have any ideas for how to keep out raccoons, leave a comment, let us know. Next would be moles and voles. Now, moles don't actually eat your plants. Uh, they're burrowing through looking for other critters to eat, but voles will eat the roots of your plants and can be a big problem. For that, I would recommend hardware cloth. You know, a fine metal mesh on the bottom, uh, with, you know, a whole layer that they can't get up and around to prevent them from getting into your plants. A 1 4 inch uh, hardware mesh will allow the roots to go down um, if they need to. Um, you're gonna wanna have a, a taller raised bed for that if you have heavy mole and vole pressure. Luckily, I haven't really seen that in my garden. Maybe it's because I've invited those snakes and other things uh, to help uh, control that population. Um, but moles and voles can be prevented with hardware cloth and raised beds. Now right down here is one of my strawberry patches. These are little alpine strawberries. Uh, alpine strawberries or strawberries in general can be a lovely target for all sorts of animals, particularly birds. So if you have any berries, birds love going after the berries. I haven't had much issue here, but if I did, I would be putting a netting over them. If I had blueberry bushes, you're gonna wanna cover it in netting. And again, I would not recommend um, the type of netting that they'll recommend for birds. Actually, I have some, let me go get it. This stuff right here. This stuff is horrible. I, I bought it at a moment of weakness um, because of my squirrel problem that I was having last year, um, even though I knew better. Uh, growing up, I worked on a blueberry farm. We had this kind of stuff and I saw lots of critters get caught and die in this type of fencing. Um, so if you, um, you know, want to protect your, you know, your crops without, you know, harming the wildlife around you, um, get a finer uh, mesh netting um, that, you know, will still let, you know, light through, air through, water through, um, but won't have those problems with, you know, something getting caught in there. Yes, it will exclude pollinators if it's that finer mesh. Uh, most of the time things, you know, once they actually start setting fruit before they ripen, they've already been pollinated. So you can put on the netting after that. Um, they do make bird safe netting, which is a, um, a softer material that doesn't like sort of get caught on itself. They can help a little bit, but in my experience, birds can still get caught in that bird safe netting. So if you want to keep out birds um, without hurting the birds, um, use a netting like an insect netting. This is my garlic patch right here and it is looking lovely. I'm excited to harvest this in probably another month and a half. But you may have heard that things like garlic or other strongly scented plants, maybe marigolds, 
um, basil can help deter animals. Well, sorry to tell you, but the effects are minimal. Uh, for this garlic to really smell, it needs to be macerated, you know, it's kind of chewed up and then you can, you can smell the garlic, but the effects are gonna be minimal. Uh, as I, I wouldn't really use this as a defense for keeping out those animals. They'll just move around it, you know? Yeah, maybe they won't eat the garlic. They'll just go on to something that they can't eat. So I would not rely on scent-based deterrents for anything, whether it's planting stuff, leaving out soap like Irish Spring soap. Uh, the animals will just learn um, that, you know, the area is actually fine to go into because if they're hungry, they're going to find a way. One thing that you can do is always plant extra. Plant extra if you are able to and you have the space so that you're okay with a little bit of loss. And then if you're in a space where it allows, um, you can always do the more, most traditional way of dealing with animal predators, eating them. I know this will make some people um, maybe mad, angry, um, but um, that's the traditional way that you share the ecosystem with them. Maybe they eat some of the things that you're trying to grow, um, but maybe you also eat some of them. I'm a hunter, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm not doing too much on my property here um, as a means of control, um, but that is always an option if you're in a place where you can do that. Let me know in a comment down below what you think about my ways of deterring animals, which have worked for me. If you have anything that has worked for you as well that I did mention, please uh, let us know about it. I wish you the very best. My name is Tyler Lloyd, and I will see you guys later. Bye.